After managing thousands of Google shopping campaigns to brands like Snow, Arc and Amsterdam, Van Man, Tabs, Ovi, and many more, we've identified 11 critical optimizations that separate winning campaigns from losers. Most brands mess up seemingly minor things like their product titles or custom labels and it absolutely ruins their campaign performance. In this video, I'm going to reveal these 11 optimizations. Number one, custom labels strategy. So custom labels let you pass vital business data to Google that you can't include in regular product attributes. So we're talking profit margins, price brackets, seasonality, product performance tiers, stock levels. But here's where brands go wrong. So they either don't use custom labels at all or they use them incorrectly. We've done hundreds of audits on Google ad accounts, if not thousands. And one of the most common mistakes is they're either not using these or they create a best seller label that is static and often based on outdated data. This leads to campaigns being optimized around old performance metrics. And this basically makes your custom labels useless. Instead, what you need is a dynamic and a strategic tiering system that we keep updated. This will depend on the brand, but here's a good framework you can follow. So some of the most common markers you want to be looking out for are these. So you've got top performing products, usually 20% that drive 80% of revenue. You've got average performers and then underperformers. Then we can create custom labels to segment these products. You can do this manually, but there are paid scripts that can do this for you. They'll go ahead, look into your Google ads performance and update labels every two to three weeks. There are benefits to doing it manually though you can be way more flexible for example if you're about to do a product release that you're pretty sure about you can place it in your higher performance group and if you do it manually you can do a deeper analysis but some scripts only look at the last 14 days and you can go beyond check seasonal trends check performance in the last 90 days all that good stuff this allows you to build campaigns with precise budget control so you can't approach every single product with the same level of ad budget each one has a different demand different relevance in the year and different requirements and the more you can customize your ads to the the different products the better your google ads return on investment will be so number two campaign splitting so when all your products go live in one campaign google's algorithm naturally favors your best performing products on the surface this sounds great let google push what works right or well, wrong because you'll never know if other products could perform well with proper exposure and optimization and here's why this matters when everything's in one campaign you lose control over budget allocation between categories bidding strategies for different price points optimization for seasonal trend and also testing new products so you basically need different strategies for different product types a $20 product needs different bidding than a $200 product for example and a seasonal item needs a different strategy from just an evergreen one that's why you need strategic campaign splitting first you need to split your campaigns by search nature branded campaigns this is to target your existing customer base that's coming from your existing ads or past marketing then we have non-branded campaigns the real value of Google is basically being able to connect you to new customers customers who have never heard from you before but have a very very high intent of purchase. It's where you scale the most and you obviously get to those six, seven, eight figures in monthly revenue via Google. Afterwards, you want to get even more granular. So break your campaigns into category specific campaigns, you have brand specific campaigns, if you're a reseller, price tier campaigns and seasonal campaigns. And this way you can customize your approach for each product. You can allocate budget based on actual performance potential as well. And most importantly, you maintain control over your optimization. And now in the next point, this is where 90% of brands we audit missed the mark. That's product title optimization. Product titles are a crucial foundation for the success of your shopping ads. But here's the problem. Most brands just use their default Shopify titles or even worse, they structure their titles poorly based on misconceptions. Many brands, they make the mistake to believe they should put their brand name first in the title because they've heard somewhere that that's great for Google ads. And this misconception often leads to poor results, especially in prospecting campaigns where the goal is to attract new customers who aren't familiar with your brand yet. So here's a framework you can use to structure your titles for maximum visibility and performance. Main keyword first and focus on what people actually search for. You want key product features and benefits, highlight attributes that differentiate your product. Also important specifications include details like size, color, material, brand name, keep it at the end. Keep the focus on the product, not the brand, especially for non-branded searches. This structure aligns with actual search behavior and improves your visibility in non-branded searches, which is where most of your ad spend should be going. Now I want to dive deeper into segmenting your ads and how you can take greater control over where your ads show up. And that brings us to point number four, multiple ad groups strategy. So let's take an example of a supplement store selling various brands and products. Some customers might search by category like protein powder, collagen. Others might look for solutions to specific problems such as protein powder for muscle gain, collagen for skin repair. And some might search for very specific features like organic grass-fed protein powder 
avocado with collagen. The problem, most brands run their shopping campaigns with a single ad group, which means you lose control over which products show for specific searches. For instance, your premium grass-fed protein powder might appear for someone searching for the cheapest protein powder available. And this mismatch wastes ad spend on clicks that don't convert. So you want to think about it. If someone searches for organic protein powder, you want your organic products to show, not your regular or vegan protein powder. And the solution is strategic ad group segmentation. But here's an important thing you need to realize. This is only possible with standard shopping campaigns. If you're using performance max, ad groups don't exist. You have asset groups instead. And internal search term visibility is limited to the campaign level only. Here's how we approach this in standard shopping campaigns, which gained more importance after Google's recent update in October of 2024. Now, standard shopping and Pmax campaigns can both compete simultaneously, depending on ad rank. A combination of bid and quality score, even for the same product. Now let's dive into our strategy for ad group segmentation. Step one, break down products by category. We analyze how people search for your products, what intent are they showing, and what problems are they trying to solve. And then secondly, we move on to creating a specific ad group. So segment products into distinct ad groups based on customer intent and search behavior. Examples, seasonal items, they deserve their own ad groups because their performance trends are entirely different. New products, you wanna separate these from proven sellers to ensure Google's algorithm gives them a fair chance to gather data and optimize. Moving on to step three, we use negative keywords strategically. So for each ad group, you wanna add specific negative keywords to ensure your ads only show for relevant searches. For example, if you're targeting organic protein powder, you can add cheap protein powder as a negative keyword. Step number four, you wanna monitor search volume. Ensure there's sufficient search volume for your ad groups. Without enough data optimization, you will be limited. By strategically segmenting your ad groups in standard shopping and layering in specific keywords and bids, you gain control over how your products are shown. This precise approach ensures you get better alignment between search intent and what you're selling. But managing which products show up for which searches is only one part of the problem. You also need to control how aggressively you bid on each product. And that brings us to our next point. That's product groups. Product groups are where most advertisers miss the opportunity for precise control. A lot of brands that we have audited simply lump everything into a single all products group and sort of hope for the best. But this is like trying to fish with one net when you need different nets for different fish. The key is breaking down your products into segments based on your data. And this strategy varies depending on your campaign type. For standard shopping campaigns, if you're using manual CPC bidding, you can get extremely granular with your segmentation. Segment by brand, individual product IDs, labels, or any other product attribute. Each segment can have its own bid. So that's just giving you precise control over how your budget is allocated. For example, high margin products can have higher bids. Seasonal products can have bids adjusted based on performance trends. And this level of granularity, it just helps boost your ROAS by ensuring your ad spend aligns with your product performance. For performance max campaigns, aka Pmax, it doesn't allow for manual bid control. Bidding is fully automated. Segmentation gives you clearer insight into what is actually working or not. For example, instead of seeing aggregated data like all products spent $100, ROAS is three, you could see product type A, ROAS six, product type B, ROAS one. And this breakdown enables you to identify underperforming segments and you can then take action. So you can remove or reduce spend on poorly performing product groups. You can test those products in smaller focused campaigns or simply let high performing segments thrive without being weighed down. So long story short, segmentation isn't just about controlling bids. It's about understanding and optimizing performance at a granular level. And without segmentation, you're effectively blindfolded, operating on aggregated data that doesn't tell the entire story. So number six, competitive price monitoring. In shopping ads, your price position affects everything. Your click-through rate, your conversion rate, and even your CPCs. But here's the thing. It's not just about being the cheapest. It's about being competitive within your segment while still protecting your margins. Google Ads provides a powerful tool for this. And that is the sale price suggestion column. This column uses data from competitors, similar businesses, auction insights, and your own product pricing to suggest adjustments that can improve performance. And these suggestions can make a significant difference in volume and CPCs, especially for prospecting campaigns where traffic is colder and price sensitivity is higher. So here's how to leverage this data effectively. So number one, you want to use a sale price suggestion column to identify opportunities for price adjustments. Secondly, implement a loss leader strategy so you can duplicate your product and test lower prices or offers on high traffic items to scale your campaigns. The key here is to only use this for your prospecting campaigns where new customers who don't know you are more price sensitive. For your other campaigns, you can maintain that regular price. So you protect your margins on other channels like email, Facebook, TikTok, but for your prospecting shop,
dropshipping campaigns, you can lower your price to convert more on the front end. Of course, you'll need to obviously adjust your landing page, product page, just to reflect this new competitive price to keep your ads and website consistent and compliant. These sort of short-lived promotions or discounts are based on Google suggestions, and these can often outperform bid optimizations. The key here is to be aggressive where it matters. You wanna also know how to maintain your profitability. Point number seven, store and product ratings. There's a massive confusion in the market about ratings in shopping ads. Most advertisers do not understand. These two are completely different things. Product ratings are what most people think of. Those sort of stars that appear directly in shopping ads, and they're pretty crucial for individual product performance, and most advertisers already have them. But they're just one piece of the puzzle. Store ratings, which were called seller ratings not too long ago, these are completely different. They're sort of part of your overall store quality score within the Google Merchant Center. They appear across multiple platforms. Shopping organic listings, search ads, search organic results, and these ratings do affect your entire account's performance, not just individual products. They're a part of Google's trust signals and can impact everything from your ad rank to the CPCs that you pay. And the key is implementing both correctly and optimize them both as well. This next optimization is crucial for standing out in the shopping results. If you want to maximize the traffic you're getting from Google, this is it. Product image optimization. While Google Shopping has all these copy elements that make it effective, it's a visual platform. That's why you need to dial in your images. Google has been very lax with what people can use for images on the shopping ads. So there's definitely room for playing around with what images to use, whether that's a product image or lifestyle image. It'll all depend on your product and brand and how the market reacts. Here are some factors that you need to consider when getting images for your ads. Multiple angles, lifestyle context, clear and clean backgrounds, proper sizing for all devices, and you want consistent style across products. Interestingly, we've had data to suggest that lifestyle images can massively outperform straight up product images. If you want the breakdown on that, we did three A-B tests with Google Shopping and the results were pretty crazy. So go ahead, click here if you want to watch. Otherwise, definitely invest in good photography and design because your images at the end of the day are crucial in Google Shopping. The visual nature of shopping ads makes this absolutely crucial. Now, great images will get you clicks, but to really drive conversions, you need to create urgency. And that brings us to point number nine, that's sales price attribute implementation. The sales price attribute is one of the most powerful tools in shopping ads, but most brands either ignore it or implement it incorrectly. This isn't just creating another discount code. It's about creating visual elements that make your ads stand out. And when implemented correctly, it creates two powerful visual triggers. You have strike through pricing that shows clear savings and then sale badges that grab attention. The way it works is when you're in the feed, you give your price and also fill in the sales price attribute. And when you're not running a sale, this attribute is usually empty. Keep in mind, you can just mark everything as on sale all the time. Google monitors your pricing history and will obviously disapprove ads that show fake discounts or constant sales. Because when you have an actual sale with legitimate price drops, your ads literally stand out visually from competitors. Trust me. Speaking of standing out in competitive searches, there's another powerful feature that can give you an edge. And it's one most brands completely overlook or don't even know about. And that's the free shipping strategy. This one is pretty basic. Your shipping strategy is a huge part of how Google rates your stores. This is a factor in what Google calls the store quality scorecard. It can directly influence where you rank, how much your ads cost, and how many clicks you can get. Remember, you can get really creative with your free shipping. And here's some examples. First time purchase, threshold deals, coupon code. So for our European e-commerce brands, we've saved one of the most impactful optimizations for last. That is CSS provider partnership. So story time with Jackson. First, some context. Back in 2017, Google got hit with a massive antitrust fine in Europe. The EU basically said Google was unfairly favoring its own shopping service over competitors. Google's solution? They opened up their own shopping ads to a third-party comparison shopping service and this created the CSS program that we have today. So instead of running your shopping ads directly through Google Shopping, you can run them through these authorized CSS partners. And here's why this matters. And you can ask ChatGPT on what I'm talking about because European brand owners, you really should be doing this. When you run your ads through a CSS partner, you can get an automatic 20% discount on your CPCs. And this isn't a temporary sort of promotion motion or a small scale test, it's a permanent structural advantage built into Google's European auction system. But here's what most advertisers do not understand about CSS. First, you're still using Google Ads, so nothing changes about your campaign management, your data, the control. The CSS partner just sort of becomes the middleman between you and Google Shopping. So you've got you, the CSS, and then you have Google Shopping. Secondly, if you run ads through multiple CSS services, you can have multiple listings for one search. 
These are the 11 critical shopping optimization tactics we use to scale brands to seven, eight, even nine figures with Google Ads. Most brands will implement maybe two or three of these. The real magic is what happens when you implement all of them together. So I do hope you take what I've shared today and implement it yourself. And these are the exact tactics that we are leveraging for our clients in their Google Ad account. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.